So in a previous video, I created this lot of view where you can just enter your email address like this at test.com, click continue, and they will load, and then it will ask you for the password. One, two, three, four, and then continue, and then it will log you in like this. But the loading here is the loading here is fake. It doesn't do anything. It's not loading anything. Just a timer. So what we're gonna do here is that we gonna we're going to add a real login back into this app. We can actually create users and log in with these users. And the way we're going to make this work is that we're going to make the app asks you for your email. And then when you click continue, it will check if you have a user or not. If you have a user, it will ask you to put in your passport to log in. If you don't have a user, it will just change the prompt to say, uh, put your password in so, you can, so we can create an account for you. In order to implement the backend for this app, we're going to use my favorite library of all time, Google Firebase, because it's so easy. Check this out. I'm going to assume that you've already set up your Firebase account and you create a Firebase project and you follow the Getting Started Guide to add Firebase to your iOS. If you don't know how to do that, just look up the setup guide for iOS for Firebase. It will explain it much better than I would. Now let's get back to the code and see how that actually will be coded. Okay, I promise this will be very simple. And before we start, in order for this to work, go to your Firebase console and over here select Firestore database and make sure that you have your cloud Firestore enabled because we're going to need this to store user data. Under authentication in your Firebase console that your email and password sign-in provider is enabled. Now let's go for the code for our uh, login page view. First thing we've got to do, of course, is to import the Firebase SDK. Then over here, you want to add a reference to a user's collection in the database. Even though we didn't create it in the database, what will Firestore do is that it will check if the collection exists, and if it doesn't exist, it will create this collection on the first operation that you do. In Firestore, if I try to write to a non-existing collection, Firestore will create that collection automatically for me. And this collection is where we're going to store our user data, like their email address. Next thing I want to do here is that I want to create a variable that tells me if the user has an account or not. And I'll set it initially to false. Now here I'm going to, now here I'm going to handle this button so that when the user enters their email address and then clicks on continue, what we will continue to do is that it will check if, they, if there's an account with this email. If yes, it's going to send the user to a view where it's asking him to log in. If not, it's going to send them to a view where the user is asked to create an account. And this button is handled. It's handled here. Let's remove this fake timer that creates a fake login. We don't need it anymore. And here instead, I will create a, a real function that checks if there is a user account. Let's create it up here to keep the code organized. And over here, I'm going to query the database to see if there's a if there's a user where the email address matches the inputted email. And my result is going to be here. This error will be returned if something breaks while we're trying to check, like the connection is down or something like that. First thing I'm going to do inside this query is handle if an error happens, like this. Over here, if an error takes place, I'm going to say unable to query. And I will return false as a result. I'm going to also print out that error like this. But if the query is successful, the result is going to be returned here. So we're going to check how many documents have been returned in query snapshot like this. If there is an entry in the database that matches this email address, then query snapshot will have at least one item in it. This is why over here I say that if query snapshot size is more than zero, which means there's at least one document that have our email address, then over here, I'm going to say there is a user. And then I will return true. If query snapshot otherwise is equal to zero, which means there's no entry that has this email address, then I'm going to say there is no user, and I'm going to return false. Now I'm going to implement that here in this continue button. So let's go take a look at the continue button code again. This is it right here. And over here, I'm going to use that function just like this, handling the result. And then I'll say if result is true, which means there's an account, I will set email submitted to true, which means the user has submitted an email. And I will also set user has account to true because the user does have an account. So I'm going to take them to the login view instead of the create account view. If not, I'll just copy the same code 
but I'll say that the user does not have an account. Let's give that a try and see how that looks like. Let's build this. Okay, over here, I'm just going to put any email address that, does, that I know that does not exist. Click continue. Over here in the logs, we can see that it printed out there's no user, so it should take me to the create account view. Now let's go back to the code and handle this result. Back at the continue button, make sure that after you've done everything, that you set the loading view to false. In all cases, in order to display the views again, also add self just for good practice. Okay, so now we're done with this section. Let's collapse this and get it out of our way. Now this is the section where the user is asked to put the password. Over here it will always say, please enter your password to log in. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a condition that says if user has account, then we will display, please enter user to log in. But if not, the prompt will be to create account. Now over here in the continue button in the password page, I have also another fake loading indicator here, so I'm going to get rid of that. And then over here, I'm going to create a condition that will call the create account function if the user does not have an account, and it will call login function if the user has an account. And it will look like this. So if the user has so if the user has account, we will call login. But if the user does not have an account, we will instead call create account. Now we need now we need to create these functions. So we gotta go up. Okay, up here I'm gonna create another function called create account. And in it I'm gonna use the auth Firebase library to create that user. It'll look like this. Here I'm going to put the email the user having put it. Same thing with the password. And this method will give me an auth result and error that I'll have to handle. I'm going to handle it the same way I handle the check if account exists. So again, I'm going to create a flow for if there's an error and a flow for when there is no error and the creation of the account is successful. If there's an error, I'll do the same thing from before. I'll just print out error creating account and I will print out the message as well. The error message will be accessed like this again. And then I will also return false. Here I'm going to do something pretty cool about uh, about creating the data for the user. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to announce that creating user credentials success and then and then I'll say that I'm creating the database entry. So then I'm going to use my user collection again. I'm going to create a document. And then we're going to set its data to the following. In the database, I'm just going to store two data points. The email, which is the email that the user inputted. And I'll have the timestamp just to have like something in the database as an example. I'll just put the timestamp of when, when, when was the user created over here as well. Now, when you create a user, now when you create a user on Firebase, Firebase will give that user a unique identifier. I can use that unique identifier to also identify my user in the database. And I can do that over here by just getting that user ID like this. This is the author results coming over, coming from here. And then I'll use that user ID as a document identifier like this. Over here, it's angry because I forgot to set a parameter for the user ID. So I can just go over here and do it again. So up here, I can just do this user ID. Or you can just use let instead, like this. And then we get rid of this. Make sure to remove the cells from here. Then after all said and done, make sure to return true to the user. Now this is how to create an account. I'm gonna create another method called login account. Again, it's going to use the Firebase auth library. You gotta input the password and the email here as well. You will also receive two variables. Again, auth result and error. You will copy the same homework, you will just change a few things. So the error message is gonna say, error login to account instead of error creating account. And since you're just logging in, you don't need to create a database entry so we can get rid of this. Also this, and you can change it to just say login success. And that's it. Now let's implement these methods. We have to go back to the, uh, we have to go back to the continue button at the password view. Let's go down. Okay, we're back here. If the user has account, call self login account and handle the result. Again, if result is successful, then you can say login successful. And you can go ahead and hide the login view. Also, turn off the 
login. If the login fails, you can just, just print out the login didn't work and also disable the loading. For the create account, you'll do the same exact thing. You can even just copy the code. Just do this, copy the code and change this up to create account and change your messages accordingly. Account good, account bad. After the user is successfully created, they will be logged in. So you can hide also the login view. Now let's see how that looks like. Now let's see if this works. I'm gonna put a test email address that doesn't have an account. And it should say the user does not have an account indeed. Okay. So as a result, it's now taking me to the create account view. It's telling me to put the password to create account instead of login. So I'm gonna put a password, hit continue. And it created the account and logged me in. As you can see over here in the logs, it said that they created the credentials successfully, created the database entry, and the account is good. As a result, we're in. And if we go to the Firebase console, we go to authentication, you can see that the account over here has been created, this user ID. And if we go to Firestore, we can see that the user has been created also in the user database under the same collection. We can also see that the user has been created in the user's collection under the same ID, CQJAGS. And here's my data. Now let's try logging in instead. I'm gonna kill the app and I'm gonna run it again. Let's enter the same email address as before. It's gonna check. Over here in the console, it says that there is a user. And in the view, it says, please enter the user password to log in instead of to create an account. So let's enter the same password as before. And it logged me in. And the console says the same thing. Login success, login good. This is why I love Firebase. It's so easy to use. It doesn't take that much to implement. I know I'm starting to sound like a Firebase cheerleader over here, but come on, you gotta admit. So that's it. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions about this or you think that I missed any part, please like comment in the, under the video. And I will try to either respond to it or um, maybe create a video that addresses it. Have a nice day. I hope that helps. Take care. Bye-bye.